I know that some of you have dealt with a lot of things. Rashad just shared today about the people he ministered to who just lost loved ones. I had a dream about a friend of mine. I never saw this friend so happy. And I'm going to call the family to see if she's okay. Because the first thing that came to my mind when I woke up was, is she with the Lord? I never saw her that happy before, beaming with joy. And if she is, then praise God, she is happier than she's ever been. But I'm still going to call and check up. This woman is in her 80s. So, you know, sometimes we don't know who's next. And, and, and we're waiting for that proverbial axe to fall. We don't know what's going to happen. But remember, God is in control. And he's taking care of his babies. And like Rashad said, some deaths are God's way of escape from the hell they're living in right now. So don't always be quick to mourn your loss, be quicker to celebrate their gain because they're with the Lord in glory, baby. They would not come back here for 10 billion bucks. They would say, never mind. I'm right where I need to be. Thank you, but no thank you. So don't be so quick to mourn your loss as you are to enjoy their gain. Okay. Now let's move on. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all pray for me right now, please. Hmm. All right. Now, a lot of times we have a problem with death. We have a problem with loss. And that is a major crisis in our lives. When we get that phone call and someone tells us so-and-so has just passed away. Expect it, y'all. This is going to start happening this season between October and January, I believe, you're going to see, or maybe February, you're going to see a whole slew of people. We're going to get news bouncing off the rafters in these next four or five months. Prepare yourselves. Don't see it all as a bad thing, especially with God's people. That's never bad. Even though it feels bad, I hated losing my husband, but I know he would not come back here if if they gave him all the money in the world. <laughs> no, oh, thank you, but no thank you. So listen to this. When it seems like your situation has soured, when it seems like the enemy, whoever that represents to you, has succeeded in undermining you, your progress, your health, your finances, your situation, your job, your position, whatever the case may be. Understand this, that when it looks like it's at the most hopeless moment, when it looks like there's nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide, your back is up against the, the deep blue sea, what is coming up on you? The Egyptians, you have nowhere to turn you feel trapped. You're backed up against the wall. And then it looks like some situations turn out looking hopeless when it seems like nothing's working out for you. Everything has fallen through. There's nobody who can help you. There's no rescue. There are no emergency helpers that can do anything. All hope is lost. We're past the point of no return. This is it. End of story. Let me read a story like that to you. Now, upon the first day of the week, this is Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 1. Whew. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, I got to stop and pray, y'all. Oh, I feel like I am struggling like never before. Starting at verse one again. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher and they entered in and found not the body 
of the Lord Jesus. Now, imagine, try to imagine with me. I don't know if any of you have lost a loved one, but imagine that that quiet, that weird, eerie quietness that happens right after a death. Imagine the atmosphere. Multiply that by 10,000 times because now this is not merely a family member or a close friend or an acquaintance. This is the Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God. This is all our hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Mm, I dare not trust ah, the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And they have leaned on him, and now he's not there. Now what do they lean on? Where does their hope fall? What do they lean on now? Where do they go? Where do they run? They have nowhere else to go but Jesus. But Jesus is dead and gone. Check that out. Dead and gone, y'all. Now, what are they going to do? What are you going to do when all your hope is dead and gone? What are you going to do? Hmm. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus, dead and gone. Think about that for a minute. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments. Before we go any further, don't be surprised if the job you work at shuts down. Don't rebuke it because if God allows it, baby, it's going to bring you a major blessing that you didn't expect. Don't be surprised if some plans you had fall through. Don't rebuke it. Trust that God is totally in control on your behalf. Don't be dumbfounded and 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 lost and 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 pulling your hair out at the roots. If something happens financially and you think, oh no, I have nowhere to turn now, don't do that. God is able. Now let's move on. So what's what happened? Two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Some of you right now, right at this moment, are putting you're putting your hope, you're putting all your eggs in certain baskets that God didn't tell you to put your eggs in. And it's frustrating you because things ain't coming through like everybody said they would. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, well, what am I going to do now? It's scary, isn't it? When the bottom falls out from under you. Isn't that scary? Okay, switch with me. Change channels because the Lord just reminded me of something real quick. Imagine you're, on an amu you're in an amusement park. And you're in this ride. I used to get on it all the time. And the thing turns around and everybody's standing up, holding on to a bar, and they're standing on a bottom. And the thing spins around and spins around and spins around. And as it spins, it lifts up. It gets higher and higher. It's spinning this way, and then it's spinning that way. And then next thing you know, it's at a 45 degree angle. And next thing you know, it's almost at a 60 degree angle. And it, it is really up off that ground. And, and you feel like you're rocking from side to side. And what happens? The bottom falls out from under you. But guess what? The ventriloquial force of that thing turning around keeps your back pinned to the ride. You're on a cushion that's holding you from behind and your hands on the bar. You don't even have to hold on to the bar. The ventriloquial force is keeping you pinned and safe. That's ventriloquial force. 
That's dealing with gravity and all the other physics that I don't know anything about. But imagine, baby, how much more force God has. God is holding you, baby, no matter how much of the bottom drops out from under you. God's got you. You are pinned in the palm of his hand. You're not going to fall through. You're not going to get hurt. You're not in any danger whatsoever. Why? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Think about that. That ride, the bottom falls out when that thing goes up so high. And it keeps going higher. And the bottom is nowhere to be seen. And you're just laying there feeling like, rock me, baby. You're just being rocked and rocked like you're in a cradle. That's the sensation of it. Like you're being rocked. It's not scary. It's very comforting. And you get the thing brings you down and it brings you up high. And when you're up high, you get to see all over the park. See, God knows how to change your vantage point. No matter how much of the bottom falls out from under you, you are safe. Remember that. You're safe. You're sound. You're not going to fall into harm's way. My question is, are you determined to trust him? All right, let's keep on reading here. <laughs> and, they, and they were so afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? And he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Mm. Now, I'm going to stop there. Because I'm not going to stop permanently, but I want you to think about this. There are a lot of people that laugh at us because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ ain't walking the earth as far as people can see. They don't see him. They don't recognize his power when he moves. They don't recognize God's hand when it, when it gets things done. They don't recognize God's word for what it really is. Alive and powerful. They don't recognize it. No more than the disciples did. Listen to this. I want to continue reading. Verse 9. They returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the, unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna. And Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Check it out. That's the way it is in this world today. A lot of women aren't recognized that much. That a lot of times what God will do is use the base things of this world to confound the wise. All those that esteem themselves high in knowledge. And then God brings some little 14-year-old poop butt to tell them something, and they're like, Shh, get that kid out of here. And it could be the biggest warning, the biggest, most powerful word they ever got from anybody, but they don't recognize it because of the vessel that brought it to them. And that's something how God uses the base things. Be prepared, baby. God's going to start using you big time. Listen to this. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Then arose Peter and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them were the same day to a village, went the same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Now, I'm not going to go any further there. But the bottom line is Jesus meets them. He comes disguised. They don't know who he is. And it's not until Jesus chooses to open their eyes that they realize, oh, my goodness, they get him to go with him. They, he breaks the bread, you know, and then they eat and he disappears right out of their midst. So they realize 
we serve a risen Savior. Now, listen, I want to go, let's go to Luke chapter 7. John the Baptist is in prison now. And he is getting ready to be beheaded. In Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 17. And this rumor of Jesus went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John, that's John the Baptist, showed of him all these things. Now, where was John, you guys? He was in prison. He knew he was about to be beheaded. And John calling him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Art thou he that should come, this verse 19, or look we for another? Now, you know how you feel when you got a friend, you think you got a friend, and they want you to know they are there for you, and they're nowhere to be found when the nitty gritty hits the fan. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> now you're betwixt and between, and there is no rescue for you. And now you're frustrated. Think about this. This is where some of us are going to have to meet where the rubber meets the road. God's going to rescue most of us, but there are some of us, God's going to allow us to go straight to glory. But remember the scripture that says, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? That means for a child of God, there is no sting in death. Death is not painful. Life is painful, but death is not. Death is the door. That's all it is. It's a doorway where you travel from one existence into another. Whole different level, baby. So, this is what John said. Are you the one or should I look for another? Mm, mm, mm. Verse 20. He says, Are thou he that should come or look we for another? Verse 21. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answered, answering, said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear. The dead are raised to the poor. The gospel is preached and blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in me. Whatever you do, do not allow yourself to be offended in Christ. Don't go there. Don't allow Satan to take you by the hand and skip to Malou all the way down that rabbit trail. You don't want to go there. That's what causes many born-again Christians to commit suicide. Don't go there. That's what causes many to turn their backs on God and say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm done. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow the devil to steal your very faith. Don't allow it. If you got issues with God, cry out to him. Ask him to help you through it. But don't be offended in God. Remember that. God does not tempt us with evil. Only Satan does. God is our way of escape. Whether it's in life or in death, God is our way of escape, y'all. I watched my father die and I watched my husband die. For those of you who are dreading that moment, it is a very peaceful moment for God's children. Very peaceful. All they do is they stop breathing in. That's all it takes. They breathe out and they don't breathe in. And it's over. Just, just that simple. Just that simple. It's the process, the sickness, all the other stuff we deal with on this side. But the actual departure 
is a matter of not breathing in again. You just exhale. You don't have to wait to inhale. You're waiting to exhale. Because when you exhale, baby, it's over. You're there. Just in that split of a second, fraction of a second, you're in God's presence just like that. I remember the Lord showed me my husband passing away a few hours or a day or so before he passed. And I literally saw him do this. He leaned forward and jumped up out and he was gone just like that. God let me know that's how his departure was going to take place in the spirit realm. As if he was jumping up out of one chair and heading to another location. Painless. The Lord mercifully put him in a coma for one day. And then while he was in that coma, no discomfort, no pain, no problems. He breathed out and he didn't breathe in. That was the end of that. And we knew when the spirit left his body because his eyes got big and he sat up. And that was him jumping up out that seat, just like that. Jumping from here to there. When my father passed away and his spirit left his body, he had breathed out and I'm blowing in, trying to do artificial respiration. I'm doing everything I can. I'm like, Lord, if he's in heaven, don't want to come back. Don't let him come back. But I can't help but do this. Sure enough, my father's eyes popped wide open, went in a complete circle, done. He was in glory, just like that. All he did was he never breathed in again. Just that simple. We look at, I, I don't know why I'm preaching about death like this, but wow, it's on me this week. I had a dream of two people dying. But listen. Sometimes God is preparing us. He prepared me for my fathers and for my husbands. He definitely prepared me for my husbands because I already saw it. I knew what was happening. I knew what was going to take him out. And God let me know, now go and file that quick claim. He gave me time to prepare. If you really, really, really want God to walk you through this process, you call on them, lean on them, you beg them, you plead, you cry out, you do whatever. But don't fear the very door that's going to get you into glory. Don't fear that door. That's God's love right there, y'all. God's love is blanketed in death. Yes, death is a punishment for sin, but we have been redeemed from the curse of sin and death. God's people don't die. We pass. It's a clear passage, y'all, of the rite of passage into his presence. Understand that it's a glorious thing when God's people go into the presence of God. See that as God's glory. Be prepared. Don't be dismayed. Understand. Ask God to help you see the joy on them. As they pass, the Lord gave me a vision of my husband looking at me with this beaming baby. Don't you see me? I'm happy. I'm happy. Never saw him that happy, not even on our wedding day. And that was the happiest picture I have of him. Beaming, grinning. But this, oh, that was far beyond any joy I ever saw in him. And, and my husband was a joyful man, y'all. God will help you through it. Woo! That's what I think this is about, y'all. Get ready to say goodbye. The crisis is not a curse. The crisis is a way, a passage for them to make it. Just pray that God gets their spirits right and talk to them, whoever your loved ones are. If you know they're getting closer and closer, talk to them. Help them get ready for it so they don't see it as a bad thing. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know who this is for, but that's what I feel like is more about than anything else. Some of you have loved ones who are up in age, who have health issues. 
You have friends and family you haven't seen for a long time. You need to go reconcile. Time is short. You need to go reconcile. Whoever you have chosen not to forgive, forgive and let them know you have forgiven them. Reconcile. Go see them. If you don't want to talk about it, at least go visit them. Ask God to give you the strength, the wherewithal to see them without any of that anger getting in the way. Without having to talk about the old stuff and dredging up the past. Ask God to let you know who that person is you need to see. I don't know. Oh, I've never preached this kind of message before. But I just feel like we need to prepare. We're going to lose some loved ones, y'all. And we need to be ready. Don't curse God at the door of death. Celebrate his love as a way of escape. Not as the curse of death, but a way of escape. The rite of passage. Mm. <laughs> Woo. If you could see in God's love, death can be seen as something beautiful. Or death can be seen as a curse. Now, the way God decides to take people out will be a blessing or a curse. But remember, the enemies of God, they're the ones that need to fear death. Honestly, they need to fear death. But those that are in God's bosom, don't you dare. Welcome it. Don't you dare fear it. Because that is where you would, that's what all this that we're going through down here is all about. Graduating ahead of your class. I think I pretty much have touched on everything I can think of right now. And this is a weird message, even for me. So, I hope I haven't scared you, but I hope that you see it in a whole new light. Let me share this with you. Thank you, Lord. What the Lord had me minister to Milton during his last two weeks. There are people who live to come back and tell what it was like to die. And what many of them say is they didn't realize they were dead till they got where they were. That's how they didn't feel it. And when they got where they were, people who were blind all their lives, never saw a thing, could see everything and knew exactly what they were looking at when they saw it. People who were deaf, never heard a sound, could hear the music. I mean, they just knew. They understood. They had a knowing when they were there and they could hear everything was so beautiful. People who couldn't walk who lost limbs, who were deformed when they were born. They were totally whole after crossing over. See, the rite of passage does not just take them into glory. It takes them into a whole new form of existence. They have a whole new thriving. They have a whole new life. They have a whole new body. They have whole new abilities. Things you can't do here, you can do there. Why? It's all supernatural there, baby. In God's presence, with God, there's nothing that's impossible. I'm expecting to see myself fly when I get to heaven. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? You know, the Lord, he gave me a song. Years ago, after Milton passed away, I, I saw him singing this song, and the Lord helped me remember and wake up and write it down and sing it on tape. And then just last, I think it was several months ago, the Lord gave me the rest of the song where the church was singing, and I knew it was Milton's song, and it was the part Milton sang plus another part, and I was able to do that song and complete it. I may put it at the end, but... God helped me with these lyrics. Took me a while, but I was able to finally get it done. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. The Lord 
save me. Yes, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. The Lord save me. Taking my place, he died on Calvary. Rose from the dead in power and victory. Yes, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord save me. Opening our eyes, he helps the blind to see. By healing all wounds, he sets captives free. Yes, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord save me. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. The Lord save me. Yes, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. The Lord save me. He's strong when I'm weak. He's the lover of my soul. He hears all my cries. His love makes me whole. Yes, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord save me. No more fear, no more tears, no pain from days of old. It's a new day we praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I want you to know this. There is so much that God can do in the supernatural. You <laughs> Don't fear it, y'all. Don't fear it. God's going to do payback to all of our enemies that undermine us. That's coming. Payback is a dog. But what God has for his people, he reaffirms his covenant left and right throughout the whole scripture. We have a promise, baby. We have a promise. And we ought to look forward. Either we'll be snatched up, like the Bible says, or we'll be taken out of here. However it goes down, baby, we're going up. Remember that. Remember that. And it's not death that's painful. It's what leads up to it. So ask God, and it's okay to pray that prayer. Ask God to make it quick, fast, in a hurry. Swift and painless. And let you know in advance so you can get all your paperwork together. Prepare for it. There's no harm in that. God doesn't mind that kind of prayer. You hear me? But don't be offended in him. I don't care who you lose in your family, who you lose out of your life. Don't be offended. Some of you mothers have issues when your child dies before you do. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. God knows what he's doing. And he knows how to get a person right before they go up or down. He knows how to get them right. So don't be offended, y'all. Trust God. Trust his love for you and your loved ones. Whoever you love, he loves more than you do. God bless you. And ask God to strengthen you and prepare you for this season we're going into. Because there are going to be a whole lot of goodbyes going on. God bless you.